And we continue with the Christmas series with Christmas morning, December 25th. The Incarnation is one of the greatest mysteries in the Christian faith. God taking on humble flesh. And you think that he'd be squeaky clean, but no. He took on all our weaknesses and foibles, our worries and anxieties, just to know how it feels. And he did in a province in the Roman Empire where they had been subjugated through violent means. He was born in the sticks, uh, out in the middle of nowhere, living among people with rage simmering beneath the surface. Yes, yes, I've heard that before, you say. Sunday school, religion class, and divinity school drive that point home, hopefully. Because he assumed flesh, he understood us. But even now, as we go through life and endure hardships, we are wont to say, God could never understand my pain. And he'd come back and say, well, I grew up in the sticks with no running water, electricity, or anything. Might I add, I was nailed to two pieces of wood and left to die for six hours. I'm sure that shut you up for a second before you resume your moaning and groaning. I mean, it's a fair point. I'm fairly certain most of us won't have to endure the pains of a crucifixion. We can feel loneliness to the nth degree and say God is there, but he really isn't there. I can attest to that because it just feels like no one's there. But when you're with people, it feels like God is there. So, is one of those things where if two or more people are gathered, then God is there? If we're all by ourselves in a room, then God can't be bothered? Is God then sociable and keen on crowds, but uncomfortable with one-on-one -on -one situations? I've noticed that during moments of solitude, we generate a lot of noise. We can think about chores, errands, a song we heard that just won't go away, or a funny video posted recently. We're not thinking about that when we're with people because we're in the moment with them. We're here and we're present and we're accounted for. But when we're all alone, we turn to those thoughts as a means to avoid true solitude because true solitude is a terror. We can't bear the thought of nothing. So what death must be like, just blank. We'd be no, no more different from the car or appliances or the shirt on your back. It's an object that thinks no thoughts because it can't think. And we think these thoughts to avoid true loneliness and to persist in existence. Because thinking is existing, to paraphrase Descartes. If we take our cue from the mystics, maybe we can turn our thoughts to God and see if he'll come through that way. Maybe God is sociable in one-on-one -on -one se sessions, but we never got around to giving it a try. I never have. I tried once, but it soon deviated to me thinking about jelly. I tried another time, but ended up texting my friend about something. Maybe it was about a movie. I then thought about my old neighborhood in Sedgefield. It's dark gray roads with cracks, the red brick buildings, the large elm trees towering over the streets, swaying in the summer breeze, and peering out the screen door to see the mailman on the other side of the road doing his rounds while Lionel Richie was playing in the background. I turned to scurry to the couch and sit down as Muppet Babies played on the TV, that big box. Anyone who grew up back then will know exactly what I mean. I thought carefully about it and posited that maybe it's a step in the right direction. Now that the neighborhood is gone, replaced by modern monsters populated by idiots, it's become a bittersweet memory. I would stare at the pictures on Google Maps and think, that's the sweetest sight in heaven. It's me trying to make heaven fit my paradigm, but I'm thinking about it for the first time, and being serious about it.